the book of hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 god at various times in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets god is always speaking hello our god is always speaking through the prophets amen as mom was leading towards the end and when mom took over the mic as she, she was quoting the scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 18. So you know God is speaking. Amen. Hebrews chapter 1 it says God is speaking in various times in various ways. So he's speaking to us now. Yes. And that is a very clear thing. That if God is speaking we must be hearing. Amen. Do you know whether you believe or not God is always speaking. Yes. He's saying something. Right. Yes. Amen. And that's why he showed us a vision this morning, showed me clearly how the, how the Lord just pulled me into his bosom. And I could hear his heartbeat. My heartbeat is now synchronized together with the heartbeat of God. And I can almost hear his heartbeat. And in a short while, it's no longer my heartbeat, it's now becoming his heartbeat. And both our heartbeat becomes one. And it's a frequency, this tune. Once that is tuned, I can hear what he's saying, I can feel what he's feeling, I can sense what he's sensing, and you'll become so sensitive to the spirit world. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every one of them, those who are here this morning, that their bandwidth will become so tuned, O oh God, to the bandwidth of heaven. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, tune our spirit this morning, so that our spirit will be so one and woven together with you. One with you. Joined together with you. Those who are joined to the Lord. Is one with the Lord. We thank you Father. Our spirit is now joined together. In the name of Jesus. And when we are joined together. Whatever you are saying. Will ring a bell in our spirit. And we know exactly what you are saying in heaven. Is what we are hearing. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So in various times, in various ways, God is speaking to us. Amen. So this morning during worship, God is speaking to us. What is he saying? Two scriptures drop in my spirit. And I'm going to take that and then join it with what the message on relate, relocate and or suffocate. Part three. Is it? First Kings chapter, sorry, second Chronicles chapter 13 verse 10. Let's read that. Second Chronicles chapter 13 verse 10. Chronicles. It's not Corinthians. Huh? But as for us, the Lord is our God and we have not forsaken him. And the priest who ministered to the Lord. Amen. The priest who ministered to who? To the Lord are the sons of Aaron and the Levites attend to their duties. According to the scripture, the priest ministered to the Lord. Amen. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 18. So one is to the Lord. Another one is before the Lord. But Samuel ministered before the Lord. Even as a child wearing a linen ephod. ephod. Are you there? Samuel ministered before the Lord. One is to the Lord. Another one is before the Lord. Do you understand English? One is to the Lord. Another one before the Lord. Blameless before the Lord. Blameless before the throne. That means in all your dealings. and So this ministering before the Lord has got to do with the way you live. Come on. One is you give it to Him. In worship. Another one is live a lifestyle that will represent God before the Lord. You serve Him before the Lord. You minister to Him before the Lord. Amen. You live a life that is honorable before the Lord. In everything that you and I do, it becomes a pattern for people to follow. Hello? The way you live, the way you talk, the way you carry yourself, the way you worship, the way you, you even live in your house. Hello? 
the way you treat your wife, the way you treat your husband, the way you treat your children. That's why his mom was speaking that children need, ought to be taught in the house about how to honor him. And today my son came to honor me with an envelope. And there was a sound as he was giving me the honor. I don't know how you made the sound. I cannot make it. So I was sitting there. He came to honor me. <laughs> a, there was a sound. Okay. <laughs> Special way. He sees his sound. Then I said to him, now you are giving this, lit, this little offering, you have this sound. But when you give me 100,000, whether the sound is <laughs> different or not, only God knows. <laughs> so I make fun with him. I said, now you're giving this, because we, we taught our children, when we give you your allowance, you must know how to set aside for God. That is his honor. You rob God, you are in trouble. So they are, they are well taught, they are know. All my three children, they understand these principles very well. In fact, there are money all over the place in my house. None of us, none of us will dare to touch. I'm not kidding. So I can easily leave my wallet. I can leave my money everywhere. Nobody will touch it. Even if they take it, they will tell me that I've taken from there and I'm putting back because they know this is not theirs. And I will not do the same. I will not take. Even if it's $20, $10, somewhere all over the place, I will not take. I will not think that this, just because I'm living in this house, I can take whatever I want. No way. It doesn't happen. I remember one of a man of God from London gave an offering for Timothy, I think. It was in pound. In pound. And I cannot take that money and use it for me. Just because I'm the father. Hello? If it is given to Timothy, means it is for her. We open an account and put it into her account. It is still there. In pound sterling. Money that was given, it is still in Timothy's account. Are you, are you following? Yeah. That's how you live. Because whatever you do, heaven records it. Yeah. You're not hearing me. Are you, are you listening? Heaven records whatever you do. I told Amos before he leaves to UK next year, next week. Not next year. No. Next month. Right next month before he goes to UK, spend some quality time with them, with him and his parents. Tell him the do's and don'ts. Yeah. What you can do, what you cannot do. In fact, I helped him put some pressure for him to fly Emirates. Yeah. <laughs> they wanted to put him in KLM. I say, Emirates, talk to them. They will surely give you the best flight. Because Emirates is far much, 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 much better than KLM. I said, I must ask for it. He was like, that. these guys are paying for everything, you know. Howla, howla, howla. I said, just do it, Emma's. All be well. So as we were talking, he was conversing. Trying to talk to the manager. And then I think about an hour later, he texts me. He said, that is done. They approve. Yeah. Remember, the word that comes out from our mouth can change atmosphere. <laughs> Amen. So I told him, they will give you Emirates. Yeah. Do you believe that? That's why I know my God. I know what God can do and what he will not do. Yeah. You must know the God that I know. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Andrew asked me a question sometime this year. I want to have two things that you do. One was, how do you change atmosphere? Remember, you asked me two questions. That I want to learn this thing from you. How do you change atmosphere? From a negative atmosphere, whatever atmosphere it is, how do you turn it around? Number one, he asked me. Number two, he asked me how to sleep in the storm. And both also, I give him the answer. You can ask him, buy him lunch, he will tell you. Not for free. You know what I'm saying? So it's important. Everything that we do is a pattern. The way I relate with my friend is a pattern. The way I relate with you is a pattern. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Everything that we do is a pattern that we live by. Is this on tape already? Everything from giving, living, loving, laboring, fellowshipping, marriage, covenant, relationship, everything is a pattern. Hello? If you don't have pattern, then no point preaching here. This preaching will be useless. I'll be just like a clown. Hello? I'll be just like a clown trying to impress you with some revelation I download from internet and tell you it will not leave an indelible mark in your life. But if I've come before the Lord like Samuel and minister to the Lord as a person and live a life before the Lord blameless before the Lord then your life will change. Hallelujah. Your life will change. Your life will never be the same. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why I give you the, the scripture. Last night I had massive trouble with my back. But I'm healed today. Amen. That's why I can bend and take that. If it is Timothy, she'll be telling me, cannot take down. She was looking after me yesterday. Make sure that I sleep. She was like my nurse. Put a pillow under my leg. Yesterday she was my guiding angel. Suddenly, you know, I was sleeping. I was, she was standing by, by my bed. I don't know what she was doing. Suddenly I choked. That has happened a few times to me. Not to frighten you. It's like you go out of the body and come back, you know. Have you had that experience before? So she thought, what is this? You are resurrected or what? <laughs> she said, now my heart is beating so fast. It's like you just gone and come back. <gasps> like that, you know what I'm saying? Have you been in that place before? Like you're drowning. Okay. Davina is the only one nodding ahead. Have you been to that place? How many times? You want to join me once in a while? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So sometimes our body fights this battle. One of the things that Papa was talking about is the devil is so interested in our body. In the book of Jude, Satan came to take the body of Moses. Satan himself came to take his body. And Michael was fighting with him, protecting the body of Moses, because there was something about the body of Moses and Elijah. That's why Elijah didn't die the normal way people die. He was taken by a whirlwind. You remember? You have to read the book of Kings. Elijah was talking to Elisha. And if, uh, what he called that uh, chariot of fire came down. And Elijah was caught up into that chariot and he was gone. God took him up. I believe in the last days, the, during the return of the Lord, the church will be taken in this manner. You will not see death. Amen. Oh, you since you all want to die. Amen. I don't see any excitement in this house. Amen. Do you know, in the last days before the Lord comes back, many of us will be caught up. Amen. Many of us will be taken into His glory. Amen. Many of us will be transformed. Our body will not, we will not experience death and decay and decline. Amen. We will be caught up in that fire. Amen. And that's how we're going to return with the Lord. Amen. We sing a song, raw. Amen. That's what it means. You'll be caught up in the spirit world that people cannot understand. The other day, I think it was, somebody was asking me, I can't remember who, when the Lord returned, how is it going to be? We are in Malaysia. But the Bible says he will return on Mount Olivet, in the same mountain when he was taken up. Remember? How is that going to be? Do you know the return of the Lord has many, many levels? First, he'll come to your heart first. He'll come to you in worship. You begin to sense the presence of God. We are already in the first stage. Oh, I'm telling you. I think you don't understand what I'm saying. We are already in the first stage. The, the sense of His presence will become more and more real. That's why you need to learn to relate with the Holy Spirit like never before. 
You got to le- learn to relate with the man that God has placed over your life like never before. You got to learn to relate without restriction. You got to learn to relate honorably. You got to learn to relate without any limitation, reservation. You know, just be open about your life and then talk to one another freely. The Bible tells us in the book of James, if you have, if you have some seen or what, James 5, 17, I think, put that on the screen if I get the scripture right. James chapter 5, verse 17. Put that up on the screen. See whether I'm getting these scriptures right. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours and he prayed earnestly. There would not rain. It did not rain on the land for three years and, and, and six months. Continue. And he prayed again. He gave, heaven gave rain and earth produced its fruit. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone's turning him back, continue, let him know that he who turns a sinner from error of his ways will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sin. Now, how do you turn a person unless that person is willing to open? Do you understand? How do I know that I'm doing something wrong unless I'm willing to hear mom? How do you know? The Bible tells us that there's a seems a way that is so right in the eyes of man, but the end is what? Destruction and destructive. How do you know that, that, that the devil has hijacked you? That's why he said, let him know that he who turns a sinner from error of his ways will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sin. Yeah. It is a, in that chapter also, it talks about confessing sin. Where is that? I think it's in a few verses before that. Confess your sin to one another. Is it in chapter 5? Verse 16. Confess your trespasses. Give me an amplified version. Verse 16. Okay, like give me verse 16. Confess your trespasses. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Your false steps. Your offenses. Let me ask you a question. If you want to relate, if you don't do this, how are you going to relate? It will be cosmetic relationship. On the surface level. Hello? Talk to me. It's a cosmetic relationship. And this kind of relationship will go through storm. When it goes through storm, you know there's no root and there's no ground in it. And that's why Families will collapse. Relationship will collapse because it is not grounded in his love. It is not grounded in his word. It is not grounded in his spirit. I pray in Jesus name that you and I will learn to relate well with God first and be open about it. That's why this morning when we worship God, God was dealing with us. Lord, deal with my heart, oh God. There's anything the mom said to, you know, remember what, what she said. She said, repent. It's time to repent. If you have not given him the priority, every other thing has become, has messed up his schedule with him. Because all the other things can become your priority, especially in this season. Do you know, for two years we were all locked down and we cannot do certain things. Now after the thing, like birds are just left out of the cage. All want to do their own things. Have you ever wondered and asked the Lord, is this something that you want me to do? That's why hearing the voice of God is very vital. How many of us want to go for holiday? I see, it's true. Andrew, true. Timothy, true. Okay, let me ask one more time. Those who are not telling the truth will know. How many of you want a real holiday? See, real holiday. I also want who don't want? They mean real holiday means you're not thinking about anything else. Just relaxing in Bali, you know. I would love to go to Bali. Just relaxing, looking at the beach. You know, Bali has got a nice place for holiday. Or don't need to go overseas. Just go to Pulati Oman. Pulati Oman is also a really fantastic place. We took ADR and the team. Okay, tell me, Marian, did you not enjoy that trip? Are you looking forward to go there? Oh, yes, you see? I think we'll plan one more trip to pull out your mind. Just to go there and relax and chill out. And then just go for some snorkeling and relax. Who don't want that? We all want this. 
But do you know, but that's not in my priority list now. Because there's so much work to be done. No point going for holiday when, when the work of God, it, it is at standstill when Marion was leading worship. The church has lost its voice. Do you know the protest that's going on in the city? I saw the thing. So many people's voice returning, returning back. I thank God that our prayers are slowly beginning to be answered because God will answer our prayer. It's not just the church people. The outside people are rising up. You know, they are rising up for, for the truth. They are rising up for righteousness to prevail. Aren't you not happy? Is that what we prayed for? That's what we prayed for. Lord, let the people movement begin. Let the voice of the people be heard. Let them rise. We've been praying for this since 2009. And God will surely answer our prayer. Amen. That's why that in the church, we must learn to relate well. We must relate well because God wants to use us mightily. How many of you believe that? In these last days, God wants to use every one of us as a vessel for honor. Every one of us are important. Look at somebody next to you and say, you are very important. Don't lose your life. Those who are on online, you are very important people. God is depending on us, trusting us. Your life is very, very important. So that's why you cannot be careless. I look at my life is very, very important for the glory of our king. You see, I can live whatever way I want to live. Am I right? Everybody has a right to live whatever way they want. But I choose not to. I choose not to because I live for him. I live for Jesus. Amen. We live for who? We live for him. We live to glorify him. That's the primary assignment that God has given to us. We live to magnify his name. We live to glorify him. We need to honor him. We live to show him that truly Jesus didn't die in vain. Truly the sacrifice that he sacrificed on the cross of Calvary is not in vain. That means we can excel in every God-given domain. Amos, you will excel in your domain very well. Uh, Andrew, you will excel in your domain very well. Timothy, you will excel domain in. Reuben, you will excel in your domain. You know, Angeline, you will excel in your domain. Helen, you will excel in your domain. Every one of you, whom you are in, in your own domain, education domain, the school will excel in its domain. You know, nannies will excel in the domain. We will come to, to the place of great excellence and that truly we can glorify God. Truly God has put me in this domain and I will glorify him am i right that is our call if god has called us in that domain then we must bring about the life of christ but see the first thing we learn is relate relationship is the currency of heaven let me repeat this again relationship is a currency of heaven Amen. How do you relate with God? Are you open enough? Like this morning, he was dealing with us through worship. Yeah. There was an operation going on in our heart. Right. Cut open, open heart surgery. And he was dealing with us. Areas of your life, you didn't prioritize him. Where is your time for me? Yeah. This is probably the second or third time God is saying this you know, in our church. If you hear him well, prioritize me. Where is your time for me? Look to me. Amen. Look to me. Don't forget the days of your humble beginning. Sometimes when you are busy, then we, when, we, when we only give him time at our free time. No, we don't do that. That's very wrong. For example, I'm married to mom. I only talk to her when I'm free. Am I out of my mind? I must make myself free. Yeah. That is a sacrifice you make for the relationship. Yeah. I cannot say when I am free only I talk to you. When you are free only you talk to me. No, we told our children yesterday. No matter how busy you are, we must have time to set aside. Yeah. 
like what she said today my spirit bear witness we spend many hours on movie my sp- we spend many hours on tiktok on social media l- browsing through your facebook or doing something or even looking for some latest show that has come out why don't we take that time and learn to relate with god first and then find the time to relate with people whom you love come on church when we went down to Moa on Saturday, we thought, on Friday, sorry, we were, we were talking, what must we do? Maybe the men want us to stay. Maybe we'll travel. So we were well prepared. We pack our bag as if we're going to stay. And we went there. We make ourselves available. If there is a need for us to stay, we were ready to check in in the hotel and stay. And then after the fellowship, there was no need to stay. Then we excuse ourselves to leave. We had a wonderful time before we left. We were well prepared to let go and rearrange the schedule so that God comes first. One of the first things you need to do in 2022, let me say this prophetically, is you must be prepared to, for him to come and mess up your schedule. I didn't say arrange, huh? You didn't... You see, I'm very careful with my word. <laughs> Let me say this again for those who didn't understand. In 2022, one of the key components that is going to give you breakthrough is that you allow him to come and mess up your schedule. Amen. Not rearrange. Okay. Sharon, does that make sense? Ruth, does that make sense? Let me ask the youngest people here. (laughs) Davina, does that make sense? Abigail, does that make sense? You have all planned to know, I want to watch Spider-Man. Today I'm going, yes. Suddenly the Holy Spirit say, Abigail, you're not going. (laughs) Come on, la Lord. I like this one, you know. How how does he do? eh? Okay, show me. Ah, all the Spider-Girls are here. How? Like this, ah. Oniel, how does he do? <laughs> Must ask Notion. Notion not here. <laughs> These are all Spider-Man friends. Okay? Do you know how to do that thing? The way he squat down, then he cannot wake up. <laughs> Timothy, have you tried sitting down like that? <laughs> cannot get up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You have already arranged everything that you want to do. Many, many times in my younger days in the Lord, even he still do it until today. My younger days in the Lord, that's how I was trained. I believe mom was trained the same way too. We have organized everything, want to do something very important to us. Then the Holy Spirit comes and mess up your schedule. And that is the time you really know that are you in explicit obedience to whatever he is saying to you. 2022, this will happen to you on an, not, I won't say occasionally, it will happen very often. (laughs) I'm not kidding. Take my word. I'm speaking in the presence of God. Not occasionally, very often it will happen to you. I believe it was Pastor B, if I quote it right, he was going to fly somewhere. He was at already check-in, passed through the migration and everything and everywhere. And then finally he went to the, I think it was at the waiting lounge. You know, when you're already at the waiting lounge and to, there's no coming back, you know. You cannot say stomach ache, I'm going home. There's no such thing. <laughs> I flew so many hundred times, don't know where. The moment you are at the waiting lounge... You cannot go back. You cannot come back through the immigration and say, I'm exiting out. They won't let you unless you've got very good reason. Especially back all check-in ready. And then you say, I want to go. They will catch you for terrorism. That means you check in your bag, you put a bomb there and you want to escape. (laughs) Once the bag is check-in, you must be check-in in the same plane. You cannot just check in your plane and exit out now. You'll be caught. 
I don't know whether I'm quoting this right. I'll correct it if it is wrong. But this is what happened. I remember Pastor B shared this in one of the conferences. Or did personally, I can't remember. But one of the conferences. He said, he was already checking. Everything passed. And he was at the waiting lounge. The Holy Spirit said, return home. And you know what? The aeroplanes crashed. I'm not joking. And they started to question him. Why did you exit the plane? God will come to that place of rearranging your schedule. You really plan everything, you know. And then the Holy Spirit putting it in your heart. Change the schedule. Don't go. Because catastrophe is waiting for you. God by his grace protects you. That will be for 2022. That's why you must relate with God well. Your relationship with God is, is clean, honorable, holy. You're not using him. You're not using the man of God. You're not using, abusing and dumping. Don't ever do that. Relationship is honorable. It's not use, abuse, dumb. No. When you don't like, you don't want to come. No, no, no. Relationship is eternal. Because God is giving us a relationship that is eternal. What I'm giving to you is the life of God. Amen? And it's eternal. Okay, is that clear? With that, I'll take you to the Shunammite lady in a short while. And continue on what I said last week. So, relationship is very vital. Go back to the scripture again. In James, give me an amplified. Let's dissect a bit there. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Your false steps. Are you ready to confess? False steps. If you have taken wrong steps in your life, you must be ready to confess. Not just to God. Pray for one another. Therefore, confess your sins to who? Many of us are very good in confessing to God. Privately. <laughs> very good. You, you, many times you fail God, you did something wrong. Very easy to stand before God and confess to God. That's one level. There's another level, confessing to one another. You know, dear, I'm sincerely sorry for what I've done. I am weak. Please pray for me. Help me. Can we actually do this? <laughs> ah, very quiet here in this room. Talking to my friend, Pastor Christian. He called me and told me a few things that what he's going through. And I call him and tell him what I, I'm going through. Why we confess to one another? Because we know there's power in confessing. And we know that the person will cover you. I'm not asking you to confess to everybody. Eh? Please, I, that's not what I said. I'm saying if the relationship is honorable relationship. You know that the person will not expose you. The person will cover you. And this happens through the process of time. You cannot know a person just by two days meeting, you know. Through the process of time, the person has gone through mountains and valley with you. You have walked through fire together. You have gone through bitter experience together. Come on, talk to me. You have gone through all kinds of attacks of the enemy and he fought the battles together. And you win the battles together. You cover one another's weakness. And you ride on the person's strength. And you provide strength for the person when the person is weak. And the person do likewise. And this relationship is tested over and over and over and over. In every area. Finance wise you are tested. One of the things I told mom this week. I think the course of this week I said. You know, one of the tests that will come to every one of us that we cannot escape is in the area of how we deal with money. The first test is how you deal with mammon. Hello? Because mammon has a way of changing you. Mammon has a way of changing us. Whether you like it or not, please, please hear it from me. I know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? I know what I'm talking about because thousands and dollars has gone through our hands to become a blessing. 
Amen. If ever I want to boast in the Lord, I, I will stand here and boast before you. We have given much for the Lord and His work as far as this congregation is concerned. I'm not comparing with other people. Talk to me. As far as in giving, if you want to, for, for comparison reason, for teaching purpose, I'm not saying this to compete with you. Please don't get me wrong. I'm talking about for comparison so that we can share note. In the area of giving and sacrifice, yeah. I can truly say that we have given enough. Yes. And we will continue to give. And it will never end. Yes. Yes. It will never end. Amen. Hello? Amen. Many of your life is, you are alive here because of the way we have sown into your life. Whether you believe it or not, yeah. that's true. Whether in giving, in standing with you, supporting you, praying, and pushing through. Yeah. And for that, I can boldly stand here, like Paul said, I can boast in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's why, that, that's why I can tell you things like this. Because I've never come in, I stay in a place of taking, taking from you. Have I taken anything from you? No. no. Have, I, have I loaned your car? No. Have I want to come and stay in your house? No. Talk to me. We have given our house for free for people to stay and still owing us. Yeah. Where or not? Only God knows where is this person. Am I looking for them? No, I'm not looking for them. The Holy Spirit will hunt the person and bring him back at, at, at a certain time. Amen. Like what happened to my son, Gift, who is there. I'm sure he watched a video and he, and I don't mind. He doesn't mind. Because he publicly confessed. Said that I, what I did to you is wrong. So I want to come back and restore with you before I go and be united with my wife in Thailand. And he's doing very well. And he's doing very well. He's got YouTube because so many thousand followers, and he's doing and he's doing farming. I can give you the the, the link. Go and go and subscribe to his channel. Amen. You all know? Are you all in? Any of you in? No. Okay, I'll I'll give you the link. Go go and subscribe and just just encourage him. Yeah. He's got thousands of followers in YouTube. He and his wife doing farming in in Thailand. But it didn't happen. As long as he has something they didn't do right with me. So he knew that he needed to do this right and make sure that everything is restored. Before he, once he did this, God just opened the door. And he's super blessed. The other day I was chatting with him. I said, how are you doing? Doing well, dad. What, where can I, what can I say? God has been kind to me. You, you know what I'm saying? And, but that thing doesn't happen unless you... Adjust what you have done wrong. Hello? That's why he says, you, your false steps and your offenses, you must now adjust it. Okay, how many of you are related well with God? Amen, 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 amen. How many of you are relating well with me? Don't say amen first, unless you are very sure in your heart. I know relating with, well with God. Everybody will shout, yes! Take the scripture, all of us will fail. You don't come and tell me actually what you're going through, what actually is happening to you, what I can pray for you. I told you many times, don't do cosmetic relationship. Cosmetic relationship won't last long. Be real. Amen? Be real. If you are weak, if you are tired, if you are going through something, if something is not clear, what I am saying to you, talk to us. Yeah. Be open about it. Say, Dad, you said something on the course of message. I didn't quite understand. Explain to me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think many of you have asked me like this. Yeah. Many of you have asked me, Dad, you were saying something, you prayed for us, you lay hands. Or you, or you did this. I watch you. You did that. Amen. And why you say what you're saying? Why you do what you're doing? I want to learn that pattern. Yeah. So that I can adjust my life. Yes. The areas that I need to adjust. Yeah. This is a proper relationship. Yes. Come on, talk to me. Yes. Let's not fool around with relationship. Let us be clear. Real, real, real. Yes. Can we be real, please? Yes. This year, let's be real. Let's not fake the relationship. Let's be truthful. Yes. Because this is very, very vital. Yeah. Before I take you to Shunamite Lady, I'll show you. Why am I telling you this? Because it's important. Yeah. 
Look, that you may be healed and be restored. How many of you want to be healed? How many of you want to be restored? How many of you want to be revived? The heartfelt, persistent prayer of a righteous man, believer, can accomplish much. Heartfelt, persistent prayer. But when put into action and made effective by God, it is dynamite. The word dynamite is dynamo. That can create explosion and can have tremendous power. Amen. Amen. And that's one of the reasons I pray. If you know how to relate well, your prayer life will change. Okay, I say again in English, if you know how to relate well according to this scripture, your prayer life will have power. Amen. Your prayer life will have dynamo. Yeah. Your prayer life will have dynamite. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's very important for you to learn to relate with God first. As I said to you many, many times in the course of this message, if vertically your relationship is good with God, it will manifest in the way you relate with me and it will manifest in the way you relate with one another. You cannot lie about this. Because there is a scripture in 1 John, it says, if you say you love God and hate your brother, you are a, you are a liar. You didn't hear me? I didn't say this. Huh? It is in the Bible. You cannot say, I love God, and then you don't love dearly and be truthful about one another. You are a liar. It's very dangerous if God says you are a liar. And another scripture says, liars will go to hell. <laughs> you don't believe me? Okay, give, me, give the scripture so I can protect myself. <laughs> Just in case people think that I simply quoting scripture. Liars will go to hell, it says. Find the scripture for me. Liars will go to hell. Okay, you all have smiley face. Then I can continue. Since you all are smiling at me, that means I can continue this message. Because relationship is very vital. I say to you, relationship is very, very vital. This year, please, please, please pay attention to this message. Revelation 21, 8. Revelation 21, 8. But cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. All lies. The second death is the brimstone, fire. I don't want to be in that place. Hell is a real place. Hell is not some kind of figment imagination, figmentation or whatever imagination. No, 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 no. it's a real place. Hell is very real. Yeah. <coughs> Do you want to go to hell to find out? Yeah. Don't even think about it. The smell and the stench of hell. Far away also you can smell. It's a very real place. It's not some kind of imagination. You know. No, it's as real as this place here. We don't want to be that in that place. So you've got to be very, very careful how we live before God. Amen? Yeah. And that's why we need to confess our sins to one another. When I say one another, I've already made it clear to you. I hope you don't misunderstand what I said. I'm not asking you to come up here, take a mic and confess to everybody. Unless, unless, there are public confession. If you have done something publicly. There is also a scripture for that. In the book of Matthew. Let's say you have seen publicly. Everybody in the church know that you have done something wrong. For example, let me take one person here that will not be offended if I take this. Jude. If Jude suddenly, Pastor Jude, go to 99 and buy a few bottles of beer and then, Tani, hey, yare re ni, vandha diare, Pastor Ani, if you do that, Everybody here know, I need you to come up here and publicly confess that sin. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
I say, Jude is not offended. He loves me. He's my son. Yeah. Right or not? I know he will not do it in this lifetime. Yeah. Unless he got nine lives like cat, you know. <laughs> in this lifetime, he will not do. Helen was the first one to kill him. <laughs> With a cake knife, you know. He will not do it. But let's say, let's say, he get drunk in front of Rose. Helen is there. Maybe Timothy is also there. Hey, yeah, there. <laughs> Maybe two of you. You need to only confess in front of these people that you have offended them. And then make sure you tell me also, because I'm your father. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You cannot escape this, you know. Because violation in the, in the spirit world, they have, they have violation. You violate that, no protection over you. You know what I'm saying, you know. So, there are sins that you confess publicly because you have offended many people. They, are, they have stumbled because of you. Okay, am I making this clear? I think this is the simplest way to explain to you with this analogy I just give. If you have done something publicly, everybody is talking about, hey, that pastor, huh? he's drunk, you know, walking around here and I get to know and everybody know. Pastor Jude need to go and apologize to every one of them. Whom he has stumbled. And he needs to apologize publicly in the church. And he needs to be disciplined for the next six months. He cannot have any opportunity to come up here and lead worship. Or get involved in the church ministry, whatever thing. He cannot. He needs to be disciplined six months, another six months observation. And next six months to see whether his life is really changed. We don't do this in church. But he tried to do that in Japanese company. They will throw you out. If you, if you come in late. One minute late, you finish. Okay, how many of you work in Japanese company before? Mom has worked in Japanese company before. Matsushita, you worked before. In Bangi, Joy was working in Matsushita. One minute late, you try to give excuse. Bang, you're gone. But in the church, which is higher than Japanese company, we don't do, we don't place such demand. And that's one of the reasons why the church is getting weak. But I have good news for you. The church is going to get stronger and stronger. Because our life is going to be changed in His presence. There will be such quality in our life. That we can really, really say, we are truly God's people. We are honorable. We know how to relate well. We know how to lay down our life well. We know how to be clean. We know how to be, we know how to be truthful. Yeah. We are not fakey. We are not cosmetic. Yeah. Okay, I've just laid this enough foundation in this. Alright, let's move on to the Shunammite lady. Is that clear for you so far from the book of James? Yeah. So minister to the Lord and minister before the Lord is very, very vital. Let's go to 2 Kings. <coughs> The message is going to get more interesting. What really amazed me was this trip down. As we were sitting down there, one of the first things that came out from his mouth is this scripture. Yeah. Mom looked at me. He said, wow. Prophetic people know how to capture what you're touching. Yeah. Or the other way around. <laughs> He's already touching. <laughs> I just pick up what is there. You know what I'm saying? And he quoted the scripture. I look at him. Oh, serious stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? It's very important how we relate. So, 2 Kings, this is very interesting. Down there is very hot. Though I want to walk around. How you all can tahana? There are some people sitting here, maybe they adjusted the aircon. Alright, in 2 Kings, chapter number 4, let's look at this. Continue again, verse number 8. Now it happened one day that Elijah, Elisha went to Shunem. There was a notable woman and I explained to you last week, she persuaded him to, to, to eat some food. And I also told you the best way to get to people is buy them food first. Alright? 
the best way and the easiest way to relate with any human being is to find the food that they like. Buy them first. I must, you learn this, huh? In the marketplace. Make sure when you come back from Dubai, you grab some food. There are all kinds of chocolates there. Make sure you don't melt in the plane. And eat all the chocolate before he arrives here. <laughs> and all kinds of nuts are available in Dubai. You can find cashew nuts. Anybody want to order cashew nut? Please order. And when he come back, he will charge you three times more. Cashew nut is one of the best you can find in Dubai. Because it's grown in the, those part of the, of the world. So... As I told you, the best way, the Chinese people learn it very well, reunion gathering. Even the offended ones will come to eat. Am I right? Okay, let me, let me, let me get this a confirmation from the real Chinese out there. Mom is married to me, she has, she has contaminated a bit. The real one out there, Meili, through now what I said, even the offended one will come together to eat. Because it's reunion, ma. Even though you don't like your sister, you still come to eat because it's the food that's connecting us. Correct or not? And all the Chinese people will say, the Chinese people, no sound one. All the Chinese people will say, Joshua, be truthful. Is it true or not what I said? Uncle and auntie, you don't meet for many years. You don't really like the uncle, but reunion, you all sit down to eat together. Ho, 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 yeah, yeah. Yi sang after that. Bye bye, eh? And next one year we don't meet. Then we come back again one year later. This reunion sometimes is very funny to me, you know? like not real like this. But they are also honorable time. Not everybody is like this. I'm just giving you some people. So the best, <laughs> easiest way to get to people is bring food that they like. Find out what Andrew like. Find out what uncle like. Ah, ask that day we asked what food you like that day, you see? Correct or not? Last Sunday we were eating together what he, he said anything also can. <laughs> he will eat anything. I'm sure specifically something that you like. I'm sure Nathan likes something specific. I'm sure Reuben likes yeah, something very special. You gotta find out what the person like. It's a very common thing. Because food is a way of getting to them. Once you get to the belly, you can get to the spirit easily. <laughs> Am I right or not? Once you serve the person and make him happy, but be careful. I'm going to show you another scripture. Hallelujah. 1 Kings chapter 13. Be careful. Because food also can take you out. And get you killed. Not every food you can take, huh? Alright? 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 11 to 25. Okay, maybe we can read from verse 1. And behold, a man of God went from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Pay attention. A man of God went from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord. Who was leading him? Who was leading him? It's not the devil, huh? By the word of the Lord. I'm going to put some checkmate here in this scripture. Are you ready? Are you paying attention? Pay attention because I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you boundaries of what you can do, what you cannot do. Otherwise, you can become needless casualty. Follow me, eh? All right, let's, let's read this. Then he carried out against the altar by the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, behold, a child Josiah by name shall be born to the house of David, and you shall sacrifice a priest of the high place, and who burn incense on you, and man's bones shall be burned on you. And he, have, he gave a sign the same day, saying, this is a sign which the Lord has spoken, surely the altar shall split apart, and the ashes on it shall be poured out. So it came to pass, when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, he cried out against the altar of battle, and he stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, Arrest him. Then his hand, which he stretched out toward him, withered so that he could not pull it back to himself. That's the power of you. Attack God's man. Are you listening? 
if the man is on some assignment from God, be very, very careful. Let's continue reading. That's not what I wanted to tell you. Then the king answered and said to the man of God, Please entreat the favor of the Lord your God and pray for me in my, so that my hand may be restored to me. These are the people who use you and dumb you. Okay, very quiet here. When you need prayer, immediately suddenly change. The attitude change. Before that, talking nonsense. I, I hope you are not like this, you know. You don't relate because you want something. You relate because you honor God. Can we be very clear about this? Let's continue. So the man of God entreated the Lord and the king's hand was restored to him and he became as before. Then the king said to the man of God, come home with me and refresh yourself and I will give you a reward. But the man of God said to the king, if you were, if you were to give me half of your house, I will, not drink, sorry, I will not go in with you, nor will I eat bread, nor drink water in this place. That is a government that we need to place upon ourselves. Listen to me carefully. Not every relationship we can take, you know, with food. <laughs> so don't try to offer me lunch afterward to impress me. I might even need to reject to see whether how you relate or you react. Wow, oh, that, huh? I buy for him, huh? He didn't take, you know. That means he hate me. Okay, I'm just laying all the foundation carefully so that you understand there are boundaries in relationship. Not everything food you must accept, you know, or you must give. Hello? I'll show you from the scripture what actually went wrong. Watch me carefully. So what happened? The man of God said, nope. Even if you give me half of your house, I will not go in with you, nor would I eat bread, nor drink water in this place. So it was commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, you shall not eat bread, nor drink, nor return by the same way you came. That's God's word to the man of God. God already spoken. So he went another way and did not return by the way he came to battle. This is the sad part of the story. Are you ready? Look at verse 4, 11. Now an old prophet dwelt in Bethel and his sons came and told him all the works that the men of God had done in Bethel. They also told their father the word which he had spoken to the king. Be very careful this year. Prophetically, I'm going to be saying some things in the course of this message. Lay hold of every word I'm going to tell you. Are you ready? Jealousy is one thing you got to watch out in relationship. It may come from someone who is so well connected, look very godly. Be very careful. This is deception. One of the areas you got to watch out when you're relating well is the area of jealousy. understand very clearly. Let's see, eh? in the church you are relating with me. Alright? Do you know, another man of God who can be much senior with me, or longer in the ministry, can try to copy what I'm doing and try to do it in the way that I'm doing to you. Hello? But they don't have real unction to function and the power to prevail. Be very careful. Huh? Don't tell me I didn't warn you. I'm telling you what will happen if you don't understand that not all relationship is divine. Yeah. Remember I told you sometime last year that two type of people will come to you. One will be sent by hell itself. Another one will be sent by heaven. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, from this scripture I will explain to you everything that I'm telling you there are scriptures to it so that you pay attention. Amen. I didn't cook up this story from somewhere. It is in the Bible. So there was a man of God, also a man of God, old prophet, old prophet, who dwelt in battle, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done in that day in battle. They also told the, their father the words which he had spoken to the king. 
And their father said to them, which way did he go? For his sons had seen which way the men of God went who came from Judah. And he said to his sons, saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey for him and he rode on it. Now, this reminds me of a call that I received many, many years ago. You remember there was a man called from India. I don't know how he got my number. Call me a man of God. He said, can I speak to you, Pastor Paul Smith? He said, yes, sir. I said, I got your number. I'm an Indian preacher. I got your number from somebody. I heard about your ministry and what you're doing. Um, you know, I have this call in my life and this and this and blah, 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 blah. Can you use me? I say, sorry to say, I don't use you. Only God use you. Pam. No, you think I'm rude? You do not know what I was doing then. Because as he was speaking, my spirit didn't agree with what he's saying. Immediately I shut the door. You will be in that place. Because somebody who looks very scriptural and spiritual will hijack you into wrong relationship that can kill you. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Are you I pray that you, you follow me. Follow me in this flow. Yeah. So the old prophet said to the son, which way he came? Everything sounds very, very nice, you know. They said to the son, settle the donkey for me. Verse 13. So they settled the donkey for him and he rode on it. Went after the man of God. Wow. Those days donkey. Today they come by car, no? Rolls Royce. They come with an expensive car. Donkey in those days, expensive, you know. As equivalent to you driving today, Mercedes Benz C-Class. I feel like, come, fool. The prophet's now looking at the man of God coming on a donkey. And he said to him, come, with, come home with me. Oh, hold on. Verse 14. And went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. Then he said to him, are you the man of God who came from Judah? And he said, I am. And he said to him, come home with me and eat bread. Listen, listen to me. What did God say to him initially? Do not eat bread or drink water in this place. God already say, you know, don't drink, don't eat here. Clear voice. Am I right? And here comes this old prophet, quote unquote, an expired minister. God already left him. And he said, verse 15, come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I cannot return with you nor go on in with you. Neither can I eat bread or drink water with you in this place. He said it correctly. He is obeying what God said. Even though an old prophet, a man of God is telling him, are you following? He said, no, God already spoken to me. I cannot do this. Continue. Listen to this. Lies. Continue. For I have been told by the word of the Lord, you shall not eat bread nor water, nor return by going the way you came. And he said to him, I too, I too, I too, I'm a prophet as you are. People like to match themselves. I also man of God, I have a call of God in my life. I also church people. Be very careful. Okay, I am warning you because in relationship, the enemy can come in. Serpent can come in and try to match with you. If you are not careful, the biggest trap will be set for you to take you out. They will say things like this. Watch me, watch me. Ah, you know what? That when you were preaching, listen, uh, you are not the one. Uh. You are not the one. You are not the one. So don't take me wrong. Yeah, okay. They will say things like this. Dad, when you were preaching, 
Dad, ah, okay, no, don't say that. Lah. Pastor, pastor, all right. You are my children. Pastor, when you're preaching, you know, God spoke to me three years ago, this message, you know. Three years ago, I saw the same scripture. I also preach the same dimension. I also have this one. This is where people fall. For me, you cannot fool me in this. If God has spoken to you three years ago, your life cannot be in the same place. There will be evidence that the word of God is working in your life. Hello? Do you understand? There will be evidence you can see that God is truly working. How can God's word come to you three years ago and your life never change? It's not possible. I have had people talk to me like this. I'm telling you. And these people are not here anymore in the church. I'm preaching strong house on fire. And then this person come to you. You know what? I was praying for you whole week, you know. And the message comes strong because I pray for you. I said, what? I said, don't lie. This is not true. I have to preach like this because of you. Suddenly, you know, palm, the devil just cut off. Because people are not truthful. People are not real. They try to spiritualize so that they can feel like they are in power with you. Be careful. Okay, is this too strong for you? I'm being very real because relationship matters most in 2022. And don't be fooled by every kind of relationship. Not every relationship is heaven bound. Some are hell bound. Okay? And what did he say? I too, I'm a prophet as you are. And it, oh, this is even worse. Sherin, do you see this? People will come and tell you, you know, Sherin, when you're praying, uh, the same angel also visited me. Don't fall for these kind of things. Because people can say, the same angel come to visit me also. Have a check in the Holy Ghost. Is this God or not? That's why I'm teaching you how to relate with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a key factor that will save us in these last days. Because deception will be so close to truth. Okay. God help me to finish this message well. I'm not here to hurt anyone. Uh, the last thing I want to do is to hurt anyone. That's not in my nature. But I must tell you what is true. Angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord saying, Bring him back with you to your house that he may eat bread and drink water. He was lying to him. The scripture is very clear. Imagine, you know, an old prophet expired ready and he used lies to deceive a man of God who is in the current move. Does this scripture frighten you? Who is in the current move? He spoke the word. The hand of the king withered. He spoke the word. The hand was healed. Such dimension of power. Hell is sending this old prophet, quote unquote, believer. Be careful. It's not coming from outside. It's coming from the church. Be very careful. Amen. Amen. I'm a man of God. I know the voice of God. And I can tell you what I'm preaching. Amen. I can tell you what I'm speaking to you is true. And God will stand by me to protect you. Man, you don't have to do anything for me. Just thank God for my life. That's all. Just be thankful that God has placed a man over your life. Just be thankful for that so I can tell you the truth. Be very, very careful because people will try to match up with you using spirituality. Be very careful. Amos, when you travel to the UK, hell can send to you someone who is also doing things, something very similar like you. Don't fall for any of this. Every life will be tested. 
I remember Marian said to me when she was in Rome, landed there, and they used the same lingo they use in the movie called Taken. You know the movie called Taken? Have you ever watched before? And they came to her, and she and her friend, I think, hey, we're having a party tonight. Would you like to come and join us? Thank God she didn't go. Otherwise, she'd be taken. <laughs> she said to me, Dad, very similar lingo they use in the Taken movie. There are patterns people follow now. And you don't understand. That movie was created uh, after some study done how people were kidnapped. The Taken show 1 and 2. And she told me the dialogue is the same. This is before Taken movie was released. Am I right? What year was that? 2007. Taken was released later. 7 or 8. And she was in Rome. Some guys came to her and said, would you like to come and join us tonight? We're having party, girls. Rome. Huh? Yeah. Oh, they even asked her which country you're from, right? Yeah. They even asked her which country you're from. She told me this. Can you imagine? People can use the same lingo they use everywhere. Be careful, Amos. UK. Hey, Amos. Hey, cool man. I've been following you, you know. Ah, you are the coolest man. Don't fall for this stuff. I've been watching you, buddy. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, you are the man. Don't. There's a way of even kidnapping men using men. Sometimes they will sell, send pretty girls to come and leo you. All the young people, don't fall for this. Pretty girls, pretty guys. Pretty guys, sorry. Handsome guys. <laughs> Be very careful because that's how they send things to deceive God's people. You need to be at the highest position in the Lord to discern which relationship is of God and not of God. Okay? Alright. Let's continue. I'll show you what's happening, going to happen here. He went back with him. Oh Lord. And he ate bread in his house and drank water. Violated God. My question to you, why didn't he lay hold of what God said to him and stick to it? He was so persistent to the, with the king, remember? But how did he fall for this man? Because of what he said in verse number 18. I too, a prophet as you are match up with you i also go to church people i also sing the same song as you doesn't mean you sing the same song you're on the same frequency doesn't mean you sing the same song you're on the same bandwidth be careful doesn't mean you use the same kingdom lingo you are in the kingdom. There's a life that you got to watch. This is what I'm trying to tell you. That is why Elisha went to the Shunammite lady's house. He is not a fool, no? The people give him food straight away, enter. He know what kind of woman and what quality she has. I pray that you have that kind of quality. Unshakable conviction in the name of Jesus. You have some quality in your life. Hell cannot violate you. Hallelujah. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. The gates of hell will not prevail against the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus. I pray for every sons and daughters. Those who are hearing. And those who will listen to the archive file. In Jesus name. The hell will not prevail over you. Because you have given us a power to shut down hell. And open heaven's door. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Do you understand? This message is coming from the throne room. Pay attention to it. Don't think that, oh, dad is speaking like this strong again. Please, I beg you by the message of God, pay attention to what I'm saying. Because this will help you align your life and protect you in the days ahead. Because people will try to match you, match with you, use the same lingo, use the same song. Same feel. You all have to test their life. 
Test the way they relate with other people. Test the way they relate with money. Test the way they relate with resources. The best way to test is test the place of their obedience. How is their obedience record shows? Okay. Did you hear what I said? Test the way they, how they have been obeying God. If you are connecting with me closely, you know this is my hallmark. How you've been obeying God will actually give you enough credit in the spirit world that the devil cannot mess around with you. It's not about how much you have given me, how you take me for makan, all that. Anybody can do. The hallmark of every believer is how you have explicitly obeyed him regardless of what your flesh tells you. In the place of inconvenience, you have come to the place of honor and obeyed him thoroughly, thoroughly. That is where you have set a hallmark before heaven. And hell fears this. May the Lord give you this gift in the name of Jesus. That's my earnest, sincere prayer for you today. Amen. This is my prayer for you today. That you come to the place of explicit obedience. You know, the devil used this old prophet to hijack this honorable man of God who stood his ground before the king just by using lies. I prayed, you know. I said to, when I read the scripture and I begin to prepare this word, I said, Lord, when I get to heaven, I want to ask the man of God, why didn't you discern? Where is your discernment, man? I pray that you receive, receive discernment. The highest discerning spirit will come upon you. You will discern which is right, which is wrong, which is demonic, which is not truthful. Good to see Paul from Dubai. Hallelujah. Amen. It's very important for you to discern every spirit. Very important. Let me, let me lay a few things and I'll end this today. As I told you, this is a very long message. Relate, relocate, or you will suffocate and die. I'm just laying all the framework for this. By the time I finish this whole message, you will be on your knees thanking God that you heard such a message in your life. Amen? Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm laying foundation little by little. I'm not rushing this message out because this 2022, this message will protect you. Even if I have to preach it through March and April, doesn't matter. Because this message is very, very vital in these last days. Because we need to know which is God and which is not. Amen? So he went back and ate. Now it happened as they sat at the table. The word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back. And he cried out to the man of God who came from Judah saying, Thus says the Lord, because you have... Listen, listen, listen. Can I ask you a question? The word of God didn't come to the man who disobeyed. The, the word of the Lord came to the old prophet. It frightened me, you know. That means, uh, this guy had a mixture. He can hear God. He can hear devil too. And God shut down from talking to the young prophet. I pray that we will not in this place. I pray for myself that I will not be in this place. It's so scary. That God stopped talking to the one who really stood by. And the word of the Lord came to the old prophet who lied. And he spoke to him. Guess who didn't die here? This guy didn't die. You think it's unfair? There's something God is trying to tell us here. Are you listening? Be very, very careful, eh? This is very important. And he cried out to the man of God who came from Judah, says the Lord, because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord and have not kept the commandment which I, which the Lord your God commanded you, but you came back at bread, drank water in this place. Now who lied to him? Who's speaking to him? Sometimes you read scriptures like this, you feel like tearing the Bible and throw it back, you know, to the man who lied. 
He's so angry. When you read, aren't you not angry, Rose? How can this guy lie? And then now, God is speaking through him to tell the man, you have disobeyed him. Eat no bread and drink no water. Your corpse shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. This is the most scariest statement you can ever hear. And the rest of it, you know the story. Along the way, lion at him for breakfast. Kill him, lah. Kill him means gone, lah. <laughs> Corpse was found. Singham came. Not like some politician in Malaysia say, got lion in Malaysia. <laughs> Silly sausage. You know. Where got lion in Malaysia? Oh, don't you know I'm talking about? Go and see the latest <laughs> speech from some idiotic people. Orangutan and lion. So it was after he had eaten the bread and drink the, and settled the donkey and the prophet whom he had brought back when he was gone, a lion met him. Lion met him. Hmm. Immediately lion met him. On the road and killed him. And his corpse was thrown on the road and the donkeys stood by it the lion, you see, the lion didn't eat donkey, he eat the man. Sorry, lion didn't attack the donkey, <laughs> but attack the man. Who is in a better position? The donkey is in a better position than the man. I pray that we will not come to that place because of disobedience. Ask the Lord, help me, O oh God, to live in a place of explicit obedience. That I will not violate your word. Whatever you have spoken stays. I live by your word. I will not be deceived because the food that I like. Bread. Food. Okay? This part is clear. The foundation is clearly laid. I think you understand this very well. Now go back to 2 Kings and I will finish with these few points. And then we can continue next week. Amen? Go back to 2 Kings again. So the, man, the woman said in verse 10, Please let us make a small upper room. So give him the man of God food to eat. So it was often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. That means this food is not a one day, one day food, you know. The woman know what Elisha liked. And Elisha was going through the house, of course, with the permission of the husband. He didn't violate that. Are you there? And he and Gehazi, they were going to the house regularly to eat some food that the woman has prepared for him. And she said to her husband, that's what, that, you see, every word carries weight. Follow me carefully. Verse number nine. She said to her husband, look now. Why she said to her husband, this is called divine order. She didn't violate and reject the husband and went and invited the man to her house. Talk to me. No matter how spiritual you can be, you cannot violate divine order in your house. Your husband who are spiritually connected to heaven is still the head of your house. I'm not talking about those who are not spiritually connected. I'm talking about those who are spiritually connected to heaven. And those who are not spiritually connected, you still need to submit to them. According to the word of God. You cannot say, uh, that say, uh, I don't need to submit. No. I'm talking about those non-Christian husband. If you have somebody like that, or not, you know, you've been married before. Because sometimes this video goes to archive file. People may take me out of context. So I got to be very careful what I'm saying. Because I've explained so many things. Sometimes people just listen to one portion of the message and they say, he said this, you know. I've been accused like this over and over. Saying things like, oh, the man is teaching, I don't need to obey the husband. That's not what I said. Eh? Let me repeat this again. You must submit to your husband who is the head of the house. But what I'm showing you in contextual point in this scripture, the woman said to the husband, 
Look now. The husband didn't, didn't realize because he was not in the state to, to understand what's happening outside the house. But she could, she could pick up. Amen. That's why if you are husband and wife, if your wife is picking up something, you must facilitate for them if you are a man of God in your own house. Okay, am I making this clear to you? If you are husband and wife, you are married and you are godly people and you are living together. And, and of course, obviously, you have to live together. If you are living together and then, you know, your wife is picking up something, please don't brush them off. Because they are picking something that the move of God is outside our house. Now that move must come into our home. Can you understand? The move is going on outside. The move is going on. But this woman who is not only a notable woman, someone who is prominent in her place, but she is, was spiritually sensitive. She could pick up what's happening on the outside. She said, I've been watching this man. Look now, I know that this man is a holy man of God. How does she know? Her frequency and her bandwidth, bandwidth connected to Elijah and Gehazi who was walking past regularly outside their house. Do you understand? This year, you have to know who is carrying that frequency and connect. But before you do that, you must come under covering. The husband here is a picture you come under covering over the man above you. Okay, am I making a very important point here? Please pay attention. Okay, let me repeat again. Whatever you are hearing, whatever frequency you are connecting, there is a covering over your life. As far as a marriage is concerned, husband is the head over you who, who is giving you covering. Am I right? As far as a church is concerned, in a church context, whatever you are picking up, the man of God over you is the one who is giving you the covering. Did you hear? The man of God, the father in the faith over your life is the one who is giving you the covering. It can be business connection. It can be something that God is doing outside. The problem why the man of God died because he don't have a counsel. He don't have a counsel. He, do, he didn't say, hey, wait a second. I know you're an old prophet, but let me give a call to my friend. And find out whether you are saying, is it ringing in his spirit or not? If the man of God had a companion and a partnership in destiny, he wouldn't have died. He would have exposed the old prophet. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why whatever I'm hearing and picking up, first, I'll relate with mom. Second, I relate with my father. And the other things that I relate with is my brothers who are connected in the same frequency. See, what are you picking? Until that protection is in your life. Don't make a move. It can be business connection. It can be millions of dollars coming your way. It can be, I don't care what comes to you. If you don't have a covering over your life, you're gone. Amen. 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 Am I making things very simple here? It's practical things that you can understand. Amen. The woman sensed that God is moving outside. But she didn't violate the house and straight away uh, bring, make, make food for him and make upper room without telling the husband. She said to the husband, look now. Amen. Whatever you're picking. Talk to the man above your life. That's why we have dedicated, dedicated line to all the families. Mom and I have a channel. Married couple, you are, you are in the channel. Even some non-married non -married people are also in our channel. That means that I had a dream. That I fall for this man. I really like him. Oh, that I fell for this woman. I really like him. Don't go and like him first. Then come and tell me. Yeah. No. That's not how you relate. You relate not because after you like already. No. There are qualities that you need to know. Okay, business association. Who I can sign contract with. Who I cannot. You know, even though the offer is great, everything is well. I don't want to do it. I need your counsel. Rose, you talk to me. Just 
very recently, about last year, some business deal that was coming. And I told you, this is the way to go about. I'm not sure whether it's materialized or maybe it's still in the talking. It doesn't matter whether it happens or not, but, but you know that who to talk to for counsel, for protection, not for anything else. But you know what? Some people don't like to talk. You have to share with that. You know I got a million dollar contract. You'll be asking for tight. You'll be a stupid idiot, you know. I hope, sorry, uh, I have to use words like this. Because some people are so silly. How's your business, so Sola? No, you must be open. I'm not looking for your money. Talk to me. I'm concerned for your protection. More than, if you honor me, it's hallelujah. You don't honor me, you, you are violating. It's between you and God, not me. I'm fine. I'm talking about you, your, your own protection. It is very important. Okay, it's not you. Huh? I talk to many other pastors, so I know. And they tell me, some of my people don't open up themselves to me because they're scared that if they're doing well, then I will place some demand and send tithe to me. I said, that, that is a problem, you know, that, but not here. Thank God. I hope you're not that, those company. Yeah. I have pastor friends who are going through this kind of struggles. I'm telling you from what I know. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So they purposely look very poor. <laughs> I'm not joking. This is true. There are demonic things happening in the body of Christ. Thank God it's not happening in here. They purposely look like they are in need and they are struggling so that the pastor will not look to them for honorarium and things like that. Thank God you know, for Papa for what he has done into our life from the time we met him and where we are financially. You must really thank God for the man. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's why you got to thank God for what I have contributed into your life. You must thank God. It didn't just happen like this, you know. Nothing happened just like that. It happens because of, by means of connection. Amen. So please remember. So when the woman said, look now, I know this is a holy man of God. That actually, I can draw a principle from here to tell you that she didn't violate the divine order in her house. She didn't violate the divine order in her house. Even though she... God and God could be a little bit more spiritual than a husband. But yet she didn't violate. She still submitted to her husband and have a word with him. There is a man of God and I'm picking this. Can you on that fan please? I feel like I'm in oven. Turn it this side. Thank you. Before I finish the me message, I'll be cooked. You know. I'm literally drenching. This side. Thank you. Just blow it here, Amos. I'm going to finish in a few minutes. The, what did the woman say? I know. He is a holy man of God. Who passes regularly. So she's been intercepting. She's been intercepting in the spirit. And she recognized that this is a man of God. Yeah, just leave it there. It's okay, Amos. Cool. Once in a while, I can catch some wind, the Holy Ghost, and then come back. <laughs> okay, pay attention to me, not to the fan. Please look here. Let me finish this. She said she know. Do you know that God is moving? Yes. If you know, yet you must come under covering. It's for accountability. Yes. It's for protection. Yes. It's for for you not to violate divine order that God has placed over your life. Amen? You come under protection. When you have a government of God over your life, there is no way you will be killed like that young prophet. No way you, be, you violate God's word. And God shuts door on you. And he has to speak to the wicked man to tell you. How is that man? It's very scary. That's why I pray in Jesus' name. That you and I will come under covering. You and I will come under proper protection. And that's the reason why when the famine hit the land, when the sun died, 
she know where to turn to. Which I will come back and continue next week. You see, I got to lay so much of foundation before I take you to where I'm going. Because this is a very long message. When the son died, she know who to turn to. And Elisha even said from Mount Carmel, the Lord has kept this from me. Remember? Elisha said, the Lord has kept this from me. I cannot pick up where, what is she going through? And she, he said to Gazi, Gazi, go run. Find out what happened. Are you there? And Elisha could pick up. That's how she was connected to the man of God. And yet, and yet, she didn't violate. You know, she didn't talk to anyone. She went straight to the man of God. Hell is late. And then the rest of it, I'll explain to you. From that point, what actually happened? Where is Gehazi's position? What God was doing? Right up to the time we went to the room, every one of, it, every one of those points I've, I've, I've written down, every one of these has a message. I pray that you understand this. Relate well. Otherwise, you relocate yourself at the wrong place with the wrong company of people. And infused with lies, you can suffocate and get killed. Stand to your feet. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for the clarity of your word this morning. Only you can make it possible for us to hear what heaven is saying to us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. I want you to lift up your hands and begin to thank him. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. Taking us, taking us from glory to glory, strength to strength, day by day. You are aligning us, adjusting us, so that we can become like you. Lord, in any way, we don't want to stumble against your will and your word of God. We want to lay hold of your promise and we will stay to your word. And we will not be deceived along the way. Help us to relate well. Relate well with divine order, with proper protocol and how to relate. And the examples that we have seen in the Bible. Help us to use these. To navigate through in these hard times. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, we honor you and all God's people say. Amen, amen and amen. Give the Lord a great shout of praise.